Michael, with some separation from the moment, how do you now see history books marking the day? Uh, it's looking more important in history by the day, Shep. And we talked about that a year ago today, a year ago tonight. But, you know, here's a case where this was a, an attack on the Capitol and the Congress is major, more major than any in American history since August of 1814, when the British burned out the Capitol and the White House. What is going to make this more important in history, if we get evidence of this beyond what we know right now, is was this abetted by sitting members of Congress? Was this abetted or instigated by members of the Trump administration? Did President Trump himself, was he involved in an arrangement to encourage this attack on the Congress and the Capitol with the intention of stealing the election and stopping the certification of Joe Biden and stopping the peaceful transfer of power. If that is the case, and there's more and more evidence that all this may be true, we may be seeing a, a situation where Nancy Pelosi may have been up for possible assassination or Mike Pence on that gallows that was established outside the Capitol. Just today, we're learning that Kamala Harris, the vice president-elect, may have been vulnerable to violence herself that day. Was there a connection? We don't know yet. But here's a case where we're finding out more and more, if you'll have me back a year from now, and hope you'll have me back before then, but a year from now, we will know a lot more. You know, though, Michael, there are Trump supporters all over America, our neighbors and our friends, in many cases, our loved ones, Absolutely. To say, you know what, this was a this was a, a demonstration that became a riot that just sort of boiled over. All of these suggestions that it's something more than that are absurd. And by the way, the election was stolen, and 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 President Biden is illegitimate. It's not crazy talk. It is what they believe, and therein lies the real bed of this problem. There are two sets of truths that we can't seem to. To, to bridge. And I, I don't know of a time, I, that's what I'm leaning on you. Ha, has there been a time in history where we couldn't even agree on the most basic facts? And how did we get out of it? Because we're stuck. Nothing like this. Uh, you know, if we were, let's say, we're talking about the election of 1940 or 1900, there would have been conspiracy theories like this, the false tale that Donald Trump won the 2020 election, but it was stolen from him. That's not true. He lost by 7 million popular votes. Every effort to look at those results suggests that that was true. Uh, there would be other conspiracy theories that would lead to, you know, things like Antifa was behind the attack on the Capitol. You know, that was also not true. But the point is, Shep, that if we were in 1900 or 1940, those theories would be mumbled by someone on a street corner or handed out in a handbill, they wouldn't get to very many people. Now we've got social media, which was not true for all of American history before recent times. And so you can have a crazy theory like that that does not have evidence, and it will reach an audience of billions of people. That never happened before. And, and that's the difference between theories like this earlier in history that were believed by and reached a relatively small number of Americans, and what's happened during the last year where you have a former president peddling a theory that does not have evidence, amplified by social media, and now a poll that finds that, for instance, a majority of Republicans thinks that the election was stolen from Donald Trump. It wasn't. Well, you know, I, I feel like if, if I believed, like to the core of my being, that the election had been stolen and the democracy had been upended, I don't really know to what lengths I might do in, in protection of the country. I'm, I'm not in that position, but, but a lot of people are. And is there something yes. in history that would suggest to us what people might do, given the fact that we realize some of them, Michael, truly believe this? And the way we've communicated with each other throughout this process has not been helpful at all. No, that's exactly right. And just as you're saying, Shep, there are a lot of well-intentioned people who have been listening to this and, you know, don't have the time to go in and research this and, you know, discover whether their sources of information are reliable or not. 
That's also been true in American history. But the point is that are you willing to allow the fate of our democracy to depend on that situation? I'm not. And therefore, mm. people who you know, have reverence for fact, as you, you do and I do, I think just have to say Donald Trump lost the election. These people had no business being in the Capitol. It was violent. It was a threat against one of the fundamental institutions in our society, which is Congress and the Capitol. And there is a very easy scenario under which we could have lost our democracy a year ago had that rebellion succeeded. What I'd like to find out is... Can you find is, for us... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. What I'd like to sure. know is if in the next 30 seconds, because that's all I have left, you could leave us with some hope. Uh, the hope is that we will find the truth and that people will believe it. And if, for instance, the Committee of Congress that's investigating this comes up with evidence that's overwhelming that people are swayed by, or let's say the Department of Justice gets into this and comes up with ev evidence that's irrefutable, I would like to think that fair-minded Americans, just as they have for over two centuries, will say, gee, I really thought that Donald Trump won and it was stolen from him, but the evidence is overwhelming. I'm willing to change my mind. Hopefully along the way we can remember how to better communicate with each other. Wouldn't be a that is for place sure. to start. I Michael Beschloss, totally as always, for your time and your patience, I thank you.